back to the Royals. Does Charles think that this uh, whole thing is going to be too much for him and Camilla? Are they not medically up to it? That's what the reading will be about. Hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. Yeah, viewer question, you know, is uh, does Charles in his brains think, yeah, this is a little too much for me? We'll see what the cards say. Okay, so this is fun. So Booper Pot Pie asks, does Charles think that the king and queen consort duties are going to be too taxing for the two of them? So here we go. You know, you would think it has to be in his mind, wouldn't you? So is Charles concerned? Does he have it in his head that these uh, king and queen consort duties are just going to be too taxing for the two of them? Interesting question and uh, interesting name of the viewer, uh, Booper Pot Pie. So, does Charles feel like this is going to be too much for the two of them? They're too old. Is he eyeing the option of a um, Regency later on in his uh, reign, perhaps? Does Charles feel like this might be too much for him? Let's see, get this little moment of meditation under our belt. So, Charles, what's going on in your brain? Can we connect with you? We want to know, are you feeling like this is going to be too much? For you and Camilla. That's the question. Okay, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six Charles are you feeling a little overwhelmed I guess signifier card for this question is going to be this princess of Pentacles so the princess would be equal to a page and Pentacles are value page of course is the least important member of the royal court and the signifier of this card of this ask question does charge does Charles feel like this might be a little bit too much for him and Camilla um, uh, is uh, is this very weak offer of value. So is he thinking that he's bringing a weak offer of value to this uh, monarchy? The um, challenge to that is this Six of Cups. And the Six of Cups, your Cups are compassion, emotion, and uh, the Six of Cups is beginning to escape me. And I'm not shy to bring out my uh, cheat sheet here. Six of Cups. Oh yeah, of course it is. Six of Cups is uh, remembering how things were in the past. So the challenge to this is this him, you know, remembering, you know, there was a time when I could have done this really well. And that has to be a guilty thought because the only way that he could have done this being younger is obvious. So does Charles feel like this is going to be too much for him and Camilla? And we start with the, the signifier as a weak offer of value challenged by remembering how things were in the past. The base of this reading for that question, two, four, six, eight, nine of swords, and the nine of swords is just uh, really um, being embattled. Okay, there's there's a better explanation than that, and I hate to keep going back to this cheat sheet, but I'm sorry. Today my brain is not in a happy place. Guilt, depression, suffering, nightmare, of course. So the base of this whole thing is a nightmare. Well, that's interesting. Um, you know, the way that a monarch comes to power is certainly a nightmare. And um, so the base of all this is that feeling of this being a nightmare. 
Booper Pot Pie. You might be on the money with this thing. In the past of this reading, uh, with this Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so yeah, of course, this is pretty obvious. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune is always turning. It's a little more difficult at the bottom than it is at the top. But the fact that this is in the past is saying that that Wheel of Fortune has turned. And we're almost to the point to where, um, you know, we're, we're going to be up for our next play, if you're in a casino, I suppose. In the sky of this reading, then, is a Seven of Swords. Swords being truth, justice, rules, and law. And the Seven of Swords is telling us that I have forgotten everything I know about the tarot. That's what the Seven of Swords is telling us. And the Seven of Swords is, oh, yeah, theft and betrayal. So the Seven of Swords is, is uh, yeah, theft and betrayal. It's typically depicted in the Rider Waite deck as some fella sneaking off with an arm full of swords and leaving a couple of swords behind. So in the sky of this is theft and betrayal. Oh, I wonder if this uh, has to do with the issue that's uh, going on right now with uh, Harry. That's interesting because he would be coming into his reign uh, under the cloud of all of that. We'll just put a pin in that and, and maybe that'll be what we're thinking about. Then the likely outcome for this as to whether Harry, uh, not Harry, as to whether George thinks it's uh, not George, as to whether Charles feels like this might be too much for him, is um, this final outcome, two, four, six, eight, ten of coins is happy family. That's beautiful because this tells me that the value of the family of the monarch is what's going to sustain him throughout this. So I like that a lot. I'm going to recap this part quickly before I go on to the next, just because I'm having some brain fog today. So the um, signifier of this question, will um, does George feel like it's going to be too much for him and Camilla? Well, we come out with this Princess of Pentacles, and we're going right into uh, George. Why do I keep saying George? Does Charles feel like this is going to be too much for him and uh, Camilla? Uh, Charles uh, comes out as this uh, page of uh, Pentacles, very little value, okay? That could be how he feels, a little uh, uh, insufficient. And then it's uh, challenged by the Six of Cups, which is remembering how things were, how he would, this would have been better a little bit earlier, but then that's a guilty thought, isn't it? And then the uh, base of this, uh, with this Nine of Swords, is um, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's just that, you know, it's a nightmare, okay? It's a difficult situation. Uh, this is going to be uh, at the very hardest time that he could become king. The uh, past of this is that Wheel of Fortune. Is that, and in fact, this just happens to be how this uh, played out for him. And in the sky of this, with this five, six, seven of swords, is uh, that abuse of, uh, uh, not abuse of power, but that uh, betrayal. So maybe he feels that that, uh, I, it just brings you right back to the Harry betrayal. That on top of everything just makes it a little bit more difficult. And then the uh, final outcome of this, though, is Happy Family with his Ten of Pentacles, everything working out. Ten of Pentacles is actually speaks to generational value. So he's got the generational value behind him, and he has William in the wings ready to pick up the, the uh, baton uh, when and if it's necessary. It will be necessary, but could it be necessary a little bit sooner? Okay, so let's go for the last four cards about Charles. Does he think it's too much for him and Camilla? The very self of that question, then, is this Ace of Swords. Truth, justice, rules, law. And I'm taking this a couple different ways. I'm taking it because this is a big yes card. And yes, I would say he is does have some trepidation about this. But truth, justice, rules, laws, those will be the shining uh, values that will bring him through it. The um, environment that that's in is the Empress, of course. He's in the environment of the amazing job that his mother has done her entire life, okay, under some amazing circumstances in which she came in, into the uh, uh, the monarchy, uh, uh, being the, the sovereign. Truth, justice, rules, law in the environment uh, of what his mother has left, the Empress. Now, the um, hopes and the fears for this is right here in this Five of Pentacles, and that's the fears, I think, being left out in the cold. And the final outcome for this as to whether Charles feels, um, you know, it, troubled by the weight of this is, in fact, this uh, Three of Wands, which are long-term plans, okay? So that's what he has to focus on. He has to focus on the monarchy after he's gone, and that's what will 
uh, determine his best decisions as to what's going to happen. I'm going to try to read through this again, but again, I'm having a little brain fog today, so hang in there with me. Uh, the uh, signifier of the whole thing, very weak offer of value with this Princess of Pentacles, and challenged by the Six of Cups, remembering how things were, underpinned by the nightmare of the difficulty of what's about he's about to embark on. And in the past with this Wheel of Fortune, is it's just that this happens to be the time that he is supposed to be in that seat, and you can't uh, the Wheel of Fortune is in the past. You can't change that. That's happened uh, as far as when this will happen for him. In the sky, this reading with this Seven of Swords is the betrayal that is weighing heavy on his mind. But then the uh, Ten of Pentacles with this uh, generational value is what will s s uh, prop him up uh, in now and in the future. Okay. Um, then this very self of that question is a great big offer of uh, truth, just uh, truth, uh, justice rules and law, and then you have a crown on top of that sword. Uh, so that's a big yes card that he is troubled by it, and he's in the environment of stepping into what his mother left behind, the Empress. Although I know she's not officially an Empress title now, but this is what uh, this signifies. And then the uh, hopes and the fears for this is this Five of Pentacles being left out in the cold. Those are his fears. And then uh, the uh, final outcome of all this is that look to long-term planning. That's what you need to focus on, uh, Charles to make the best decisions that you can for this monarchy and for your sovereign state. Um, I think that's how I figured things would work out. And uh, let me know what you think. Um, the cards can be pretty unpredictable. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is the Golden Dawn Tarot uh, by Robert Wang and uh, Dr. Israeli Rigardi. This is a U.S. Game Systems card. So these are great. They're, you know, um, from the era of the Golden Dawn. And uh, so the little booklet is uh, interesting. It actually has some interesting history in there about the cards and uh, and some good uh, suggestions for divination. So there's that. It's worth uh, giving it a read, uh, in my opinion. And then the cards themselves are handy to use. I mean, they're biggish, but not too big. And they're beautiful on the back. And then lots of uh, ideas on the front. The um, one of the people who came up with this design way back in the day, uh, his wife actually did this, uh, the painting of them. So it's obvious that this is, uh, the, the artwork is amateurish in here, but it's still captivating somehow. I mean, I love using these cards. So I do this so you get a chance to see, you know, more of the cards than just the 10 or so that come out in a typical uh, tarot reading and um, maybe inspire you to uh, look at different cards and uh, see uh, what you like. These are, are nice cards that uh, Golden Dawn, they inspired the members each to design cards to their liking. And that's uh, where these cards come from. So we'll get this going with these. Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go. So stop on by. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.